Becoming supernatural afterward. Being peace. So what I hope you take away from this book is that it's not enough to change your state of being only when you meditate. It's not sufficient to just think and feel peace with your eyes closed and then open them and carry on throughout the day in limited, unconscious states of mind and body. In many of these peace gathering projects and studies mentioned in this book and in chapter 13, when the experiments concluded, very often the reduced violence and crime returned to their former base level lines and levels. This means that we actually have to demonstrate peace, which requires us to get our bodies involved. And that means we have to move from thinking to doing. So every time we change our state of being and begin our day by opening our hearts to the elevated states that connect us to a love for life, a joy for existence, the inspiration to be alive, a state of gratitude, and that our future has already happened, and a level of kindness toward others, we must carry, maintain, and demonstrate that energy and that state of being throughout the day, whether we are sitting, standing, walking, or lying down. Then when upsetting events do occur in our lives and in the world, if we demonstrate peace rather than unconsciously act in predictable, so-called natural, reactionary ways, expressing anger, frustration, violence, fear, suffering, or aggression, we're no longer contributing to the world's old consciousness. So by breaking that cycle and demonstrating peace, by example, we give others permission to do the same because knowledge is for the mind and experience is for the body. When we move from thinking to doing and experience the corresponding emotions of peace and inner balance, the moment we begin to embody peace is when we really begin to change the program. So by tempering those reactive behaviors and thus no longer creating the same redundant experiences and emotions, we no longer fire and wire the same circuits in the brain. This is how we seize conditioning the body to live in the self-limiting emotions of the mind. And this is how we change ourselves and our relationship to the world around us. Every time we do this, we are literally teaching our body to chemically understand what our mind has intellectually understood. This is how we select and instruct the latent genes that cause us to thrive, not to survive. Now, peace is within us, and we are knocking on the genetic door to biologically become exactly that. Isn't that what every great charismatic leader, saint, mystic, and master throughout history has continuously preached? Of course, it's going to take, of course, it's going to feel unnatural in the beginning and to go against years of automatic conditioning, unconscious habits, conditioning, unconscious habits, reflexive emotional reactions, hardwired attitudes. Of course, of course, it's going to feel unnatural in the beginning to go against years of automatic conditioning, unconscious habits, reflective emotional reactions, hardwired attitudes, and generations of genetic programming. But that is exactly how we become supernatural. So to do what feels unnatural means going against how we have all been genetically programmed or socially conditioned to live when we are threatened in some way. So I'm sure any creature that has broken from the consciousness of the tribe, the pack, the school, or the board, or the herd in order to adapt to a changing environment must have felt the discomfort and uncertainty of the unknown. So, but let's not forget that living in the unknown means we are in the realm of possibility. So the real challenge is not to return to the level of mediocrity that the prevailing social consciousness agrees on merely because we don't see anyone else doing what we're doing. So true leadership never needs, I'm sorry, true leadership never needs confirmation from others. It just requires a clear vision 
and a change in energy that is a new state of being that is sustained for a long enough period of time that and executed with a strong enough will that it causes others to raise their own energy and become inspired to do the same. So once they do raise themselves from their own limited state of being to a new energy, they see the same future that their leader sees. There is power in numbers. So after all my years of teaching people about personal transformation, I know no one changes until they change their energy. And in fact, when someone is truly engaged in change, they are less likely to talk about it and more prone to demonstrate it. They are working on living it. This requires awareness, intent, staying present, and constant attention to their inner state. Perhaps the biggest hurdle is not being uncomfortable, but also being okay with being uncomfortable because discomfort is our challenge to grow. It makes us feel more alive. After all, if stress and the survival response are the result of not being able to predict our future, thinking or believing that we are unable to control an outcome or that things are going to get worse, then opening our minds and hearts to believe in possibility requires going against thousands of years of genetically hardwired survival traits. We must lay down the very thing that we have always used to get what we want for something much better to occur. To me, that's true greatness. So if we can do it once, disturb those neural networks equated with anger, resentment, and retribution, and instead activate the neural networks related to experiences of caring, giving, and nurturing, and so create the corresponding emotions. Then we should be able to do it again, and the repetition of these choices will neurochemically condition our mind and body to become one. When the body knows, when the body knows, when the body knows how to do this as well as the mind, it becomes innate, familiar, easy, and second nature. Then thinking and demonstrating peace, which once required focused awareness becomes a subconscious program. Now we've created a new automatic peaceful state of being. And again, that means that now peace is within us. This is how we memorize a new internal neurochemical order that's greater than any of our conditions in our external environment. Now we're not just being peace, but mastering it as well as mastering ourselves and our environment. Once enough of us can achieve this state of being, everybody is locked into the same energy, frequency, and elevated consciousness, just like schools of fish or flocks of birds moving as one in unified order. We'll begin to act as one mind and emerge as a new species. But if we continue to act as a cancerous organism at war with itself, our species will not survive and evolution will continue its grand experiment. So take time out of your busy life to invest in yourself, because when you do, you are investing in your future. If your familiar environment is controlling how you think and how you feel, it's time to retreat from your life and go inward so you can reverse the process of be being a victim of life and instead become a creator of it. After reading this book by now, you know that it's possible to change yourself from within and that when you do, it will, be, it will be reflected in your outer world. This is a time in history when it's not enough simply to know. This is a time in history to know how, according to the philosophical understanding and scientific principles of quantum physics, neuroscience, and epigenetics, we now understand that our subjective mind influences the objective world because mind influences matter. We are compelled to the study, the nature of mind. Our understanding then allows us to assign meaning to what we're doing. If knowledge is the precursor to experience, then the more knowledge we have about how powerful we are, as well as the understanding, the science behind how things work, the more we can understand the limitlessness of our potential, both as individuals and as the collective, because we are constantly deepening and broadening our understanding 
of the interconnectedness of all living systems. And because each of us is a contributor to the Earth's field, I believe we can collectively create and guide a new peaceful and prosperous future upon this planet. It all begins by making a habit of practicing, leading with our hearts, raising our energy and tuning into a greater information and frequencies of love and wholeness. With effort and intention, we should begin to produce a coherent electromagnetic signature, just like dropping pebbles in a still lake over and over. As we continue to raise our energy and open our hearts, we're producing bigger and bigger electromagnetic fields. This energy is information and we each have the power to direct our energy and intention to produce non-local effects on the nature of reality. So when we direct our energy as an observer, a consciousness or a thought, we can begin to affect a downward causation of matter. In other words, we can literally make our minds matter. When we practice these concepts on a consistent basis, changing our levels of energy from survival to states of greater levels of awareness, compassion, love, gratitude, and other elevated emotions, these coherent electromagnetic signatures, signatures entrain to one another. And the effect should then be that we can unify communities that were once separated by the belief that we are just matter. Once we transition our state of being from survival into love, gratitude, and creation, then instead of reacting to violence, terrorism, fear, prejudice, competition, selfishness, and separation, which by the way, the media, commercials, video games, and all types of stimulation are constantly reminding and programming us to live within. We can come together during crisis. We will have no further need for splintering, assigning, blaming, or seeking revenge. Every time we meditate as a global community, we're casting a larger, stronger, coherent wave of love and altruism around the world. If we do this enough times, we should be able to not only measure the changes in energy and frequency around the world, but measure our efforts by the positive changes in the events that actually take place in our future. So to stand up for justice and peace, then you must first find peace within yourself. You must then demonstrate peace to others, which means you can't take a stand for peace or be peace while you're warring with your neighbor hating your coworker or judging your boss. If every, everybody, and I mean everybody, chose peace, and if we came together at the exact same time, imagine the type of positive change we could create in our collective future. There would be no conflict. What's equally powerful is that when we are the living embodiment of peace, we show up as an unpredictable, to others, and then they pay attention. Thanks to mirror neurons, a special class of brain cells that fire when we see someone perform an action, we are biologically wired to mimic each other's behavior, modeling peace, justice, love, kindness, care, understanding, and compassion allows others to open their hearts and move from fearful, aggressive states of survival to feeling wholeness and connectedness. Think of what would happen if we all understood how interconnected we were to one another and to the field rather than feeling separated and isolated. We might actually begin to take responsibility for our thoughts and emotions because we would finally understand how our state of being affects all of life. This is how we begin to change the world by first changing ourselves. So the future of humanity does not rest on one person, leader, or messiah with a greater consciousness to show us the way. Rather, it requires the evolution of a new collective consciousness because it is through the acknowledgement and application of interconnectedness of human consciousness that we can change the course of history. While it appears Old structures and paradigms are collapsing. 
we should not face this with fear, anger, or sadness, because this is the process by which evolution and new things occur. Instead, we should face the future with a whole new light, energy, and consciousness. As I have mentioned, the old has to fall apart and fall away before something new flourishes. Integral to this process is not squandering our energy by emotionally reacting to leaders or people in power. When they capture our emotions, they capture our attention, and thus they have captured our energy. This is how people gain power over us. Instead, we must make a stand for principles, values, and moral imperatives like freedom, justice, truth, and equality. When we achieve this through the power of the collective, we will unite behind the energy of oneness rather than be controlled by the idea of separation. This is when standing up for the truth is no longer personal, but through unifying and building community becomes universal. I believe we are on the verge of a great evolutionary jump. And another way to say this is that we are going through an initiation. After all, isn't an initiation a rite of passage from one level of consciousness to another? And isn't it designed to challenge the fabric of who we are so we can grow to a greater potential? Maybe when we see, remember, and awaken to who we truly are, human beings can move as a collective consciousness from a state of surviving into a state of thriving, into, a, yes, into a state of thriving. So maybe, maybe when we see, remember, and awaken to who we truly are, Human beings can move as a collective consciousness from a state of thriving and surviving into a state of thriving. It's then that we can emerge into our true nature and fully access our innate capacity as human beings, which is to give, to love, to serve, and to take care of one another and the earth. So why not ask yourself every day, what would love do? This is who we really are. And this is the future. I'm creating one in which each and every one of us becomes supernatural. That concludes the afterword. And so I wanted to talk about a few things here as this is our last session for Becoming Supernatural, post chapter 14. And he said something here that I think begs our attention and really requires us to pay close attention because here he talks about how, and I think especially in this time that, you know, this is being recorded, this is being recorded during the whole COVID um, quarantine. And there's a lot of things that are trying to grab our attention right now. You know, the media, there's conventional media, the different news outlets and so forth that are trying to, you know, grab our attention. And of course, we have commercials that are trying to grab our attention, and uh, we need to recognize that it's if they grab our attention, they're grabbing our energy. And he says here, I highlighted it. It says here, integral to this process is not squandering our energy by by emotionally reacting to leaders or people in power. So any leader or anybody who is trying to grab your, your attention. If you have somebody who's trying to pick a fight with you, um, make no mistakes, you know, there's, there's, there are legitimate disagreements and you can have a disagreement and not necessarily have it be an argument, but you can agree to disagree. You have two people who have two different points of view and you can agree to disagree and you could still move forward, you know, and get, beyond that, and it's not like you have to convince the other person to your way of thinking. You simply air how you feel and what you think and what you know, and then you allow the other person the space to come forward and to express what they think, what they feel, what they know. And, and, and sometimes when you do that, you're like, oh, especially if you are op open-hearted and you have an open mind, you're like, sometimes what another person will say, you'll, it'll jar you and they'll go, oh, I never thought of it that way. 
And maybe it'll change how you think, maybe it'll change how you feel, or maybe not. Or maybe it'll just give you a whole new perspective where you can see why they think the way they do and you can respect the way they think they do. And you don't have to necessarily change what they're thinking and feeling, but you can respect and you can honor it. And in, in my world, if I respect and honor how somebody else thinks and feels and I'll allow them, allow myself to agree to disagree with them, um, I would expect the same type of respect to be reciprocated. If not, I don't really feel that I could be friends with somebody um, that doesn't uh, do that. Somebody who is trying to control me, who's trying to convince me always to their way of thinking and doesn't have that kind of respect, they're going to lose me because um, I will just take myself out of that relationship and it won't be anymore. I don't need somebody who's going to be judging, you know, I don't need a boss. <laughs> Heaven knows. So that's something to pay attention to. So integral to this process is not squandering our energy by emotionally reacting to leaders or people in power. Make no mistakes. You give your power away. If you have somebody who, be, let's say, nonsensically starts an argument with you, and I didn't think that this was possible before, because quite frankly, in my experience, I never had people like that in my life before until my ex-boyfriend, where out of the blue, he would start picking a fight. And of course, that's what his mother does with him. So needless to say, lo and behold, then he started doing that with me. And I'm like, okay, so even when I agreed with him, he still wanted to fight. So needless to say, that relationship didn't last because I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> so long story short, if I would have allowed that to continue, then that relationship would probably still be in place, but I would be giving my power away completely to somebody who is quite obviously out of control. They can't even control their own lives and they're trying to control me and they're trying to instigate an energy suck through, through that type of manipulation. That is obviously not a healthy dynamic. So it says here, when they capture our emotions, they capture our attention and thus they have captured our energy. Sounds like energy vampirism to me. This is how people gain power over us. You have to be aware of that. Um, it's no different than, you know, you have to recognize when you are engaging, you know, interacting with another human being. If, if, if you are engaging and communicating with another human being and it's one-sided where, you know, one thing, you know, we have communication in many forms nowadays. We, you know, we have videos, we have pictures, we have texting, we have phone calls, we have, we have voice messages. Um, and when you only have one person who's willing to, you know, to speak and the other one isn't, then obviously there's some sort of a block there. And if somebody doesn't want to talk to you, then you have to recognize, well, does this person deserve my time and my attention? Um, only you can answer that question. And so, you know, your, your energy and your time, your time is your most valuable, non-renewable resource. Your your time, once you spend it, once you invest your time, you can't get it back. And so you need to pay attention to where it is that your energy is going. And if you don't have somebody that's recipro reciprocating in kind to you, well, why are you allowing that? Don't you love yourself enough to know that you de deserve to be in relationship, whether it's a plutonic relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, whether it's a, you know, a brotherly type relationship, whatever kind of relationship that you're having, there should be an equal give and take where you both are able to talk, both able to express. But if it's kind of lopsided, then if you, des if you think that that's what you deserve, then okay. But I don't know. I, I love myself too much to allow myself to be in, in a lopsided type of uh, relationship. So something to think about. So the whole point of the study of this book is so that this is a life application study. It's not just a theoretical study of how to become supernatural, but it's like, how do you implement this in your day-to-day, -day, every aspect of your life, so that you can become the most supernatural version of yourself so that you can stand in true integrity of who you actually truly are.